Hi, I'm Amir Hossein Mirza Bozork and in this video I want to talk about how to define material properties for thermomechanical analysis in Abacus. How to ask your video related questions. Don't hesitate to ask any questions you might have about the explanations presented in this video using the comments below. We try to answer all questions regarding the video details in the comments below. This is the table of content. I will talk about reviewing the previous tutorial, governing equation of heat transfer in solids, defining material properties for heat transfer analysis, defining heat expansion coefficient for accounting thermal strains, Defining material properties for mechanical analysis of sequentially coupled thermomechanical analysis. Sources of heat flux and temperature changes in a fully coupled thermomechanical analysis. Defining material properties for fully coupled thermomechanical analysis. Defining plastic behavior for fully coupled thermomechanical analysis. Extrusion simulation by considering thermal effects due to friction and plastic deformation. And finally, next tutorial content. In thermomechanical analysis, two types of material properties must be defined in the Abacus property module. Required properties for solving heat transfer equations. Required properties for solving mechanical equations. This tutorial will explain the material properties that must be defined for conducting fully coupled and sequentially coupled thermomechanical analysis. Now I want to review the previous tutorial. There are two types of thermomechanical analysis in Abacus. Sequentially coupled thermomechanical analysis and fully coupled thermomechanical analysis. In sequentially coupled thermomechanical analysis, temperature and stress fields are not calculated simultaneously. And in fully coupled thermomechanical analysis, the temperature and stress fields are calculated simultaneously. For conducting fully coupled thermomechanical analysis in the abacus, there are two choices. If you want to use Abacus Standard Solver, you must use Coupled Temp Displacement step. And if you want to use Abacus Explicit Solver, you must use Dynamic Temp Dis Explicit step. Now I want to talk about governing equation for heat transfer in solids. If there is no heat generation inside the solid part, the governing equation of heat transfer would be this equation. K is conductivity, rho is density, C sub P is a specific heat, and T is temperature. Now I want to talk about defining material properties for heat transfer analysis. There are two types of heat transfer analysis in the abacus. Steady state and transient. If you want to conduct a steady state heat transfer analysis, Defining conductivity is enough for the material property. And if you want to conduct transient heat transfer analysis, conductivity, density, and a specific heat must be defined for the material property. Now I want to talk about defining heat expansion coefficient for accounting thermal strains. The increment of thermal strain is equal to the product of alpha and increment of temperature. Alpha is heat expansion coefficient. Now I want to talk about defining material properties for mechanical analysis of sequentially coupled thermomechanical analysis. For conducting mechanical analysis of sequentially coupled thermomechanical analysis, elasticity Plasticity and thermal expansion coefficient must be included in the material property definition. Defining plastic behavior is optional and depends on the stress level. 
Now I want to talk about sources of heat flux and temperature changes in a fully coupled thermomechanical analysis. There are several sources of heat flux, including friction, heat exchange with the ambient, plastic deformation, and temperature boundary condition. If there is friction in the model, the generated heat due to friction is calculated from this equation. Actually, the increment of generated heat is equal to the product of gamma and increment of friction work, and gamma is always less than 1. There are two ways of heat exchange with the ambient, including convection and radiation. If there is plastic deformation in the model, the generated heat due to plastic deformation is calculated from this equation. Actually, the increment of generated heat is equal to the product of beta and increment of plastic work. And in most of the material, beta is equal to 0 0.9. And the final source of heat flux is temperature boundary condition. For conducting fully coupled thermomechanical analysis in the abacus, you must define conductivity, density, elasticity, heat expansion coefficient, in elastic heat fraction, plasticity, and a specific heat in the property module. All of these parameters can be defined temperature dependent. This is a picture from the material definition in the property module that conductivity, density, elastic, expansion, inelastic heat fraction, plastic and a specific heat are defined in the material definition in the property module. Now I want to talk about defining plastic behavior for fully coupled thermomechanical analysis. If you want to define temperature dependent plastic data, you must activate use temperature dependent data. By activating this setting, temperature column will be added to the plastic data definition. And in this table, first I have defined the plastic data at 20 degrees. Then the plastic data of 50 degrees, then the plastic data of 100 degrees, and finally the plastic data of 150 degrees. For finding the plastic data between these temperatures, Abacus uses interpolations, and if the temperature goes below 20 degrees, Abacus uses the plastic data at 20 degrees, and if the temperature goes above 150 degrees, Abacus uses the data of 150 degrees. Here I want to talk about extrusion simulation by considering thermal effects due to friction and plastic deformation. Now I go to Abacus to show you this model. This is the billet and this is the die. I go to property module and I want to show you the material definition. I have defined conductivity, density, elastic, expansion, in elastic heat fraction, plastic, and a specific heat. If you want to define conductivity, from the thermal tab, you must select conductivity. If you want to define density, from the general tab, you must select density. If you want to define elastic, from the mechanical tab, you must select elastic. If you want to define expansion from the mechanical tab, you must select expansion. If you want to 
defined in elastic heat fraction from the thermal tab you must select in elastic heat fraction if you want to define plastic behavior from the mechanical tab you must select plastic and if you want to define a specific heat from the thermal tab you must select a specific heat in this model I have used coupled temp displacement step as there is transient heat transfer in the model I have selected transient for the response and these are the settings of incrementation tab in the interaction module I have defined contact property and I have defined heat generation from the thermal tab and in the load module I have defined initial temperature for billet and die now I want to show you the results As you can see, at the beginning of the analysis, the temperature is equal to the initial temperature. As you can see, due to the definition of friction and calculation of friction work, heat is generated Now I go back to the slides. In the following tutorial, simulation of other thermomechanical processes including welding, 3D printing and FSW will be explained in detail. You can contact me by using Telegram or WhatsApp or you can send email to me. We can have one-on-one -on -one tutoring on the AnyDesk WhatsApp and we can make a special tutorials to your order. We can conduct high quality simulations for your thesis, exercises and industrial projects. Now I want to suggest you several related videos of our YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching this video. Have a good time. Goodbye.